once again, welcome and thank you for being here. Very interesting conversation today about our emergency vehicle services here in the Reno Sparks, Washoe County area. Jim Goobles, who is the CEO of REMSA, is our guest. Jim, very nice to have you here. Thanks for having me, Bob. Jim, I can think way back, way back to the days when I was doing the news at Channel 8 in the early 1960s, I believe. There was one company, there were two ambulances, if memory serves me correctly, to serve this whole area. And boy, has that changed, because I've followed what you folks are doing. What, what, how many ambulances are out right now in our area, and what does that area encompass? Yeah. Well, and again, you're right. There was two ambulances. It was AIDS ambulance, AIDS ambulance way Marcia back. Geller. Yep, yep. Marsha Geller and Medic One, way back when. And Medic One came into town about 1980. Uh, I was actually in the community there at that time, and my background is nursing. So uh -huh. I was running the emergency department as a head nurse down at Washoe Medical Center way back in then, the new, you know, the renamed, renowned me regional medical center now. So what happened in the uh, about middle 80s is when REMSA, the franchise, was formed. And since then, we've really grown a lot throughout the community uh, at the same time the community's grown. For instance, when I first started with REMSA, uh, was about 18 years ago. And at that time, we had about 15 ambulances in the service. Today, we've grown to 42 ambulances, mm. so as the system grows, uh, as the community grows, so does the system grows to meet those needs. Um, at the same time, we also have Care Flight. So both Care Flight and REMS are under the same umbrella. And then Care Flight, as you know, is our medical helicopter service. And we actually have three, three medical helicopters. So we have one here based at Renown Regional Medical Center, another helicopter based down in Minden Gardnerville, and then our third helicopter is based over in Truckee, California mm -hmm. at the airport. Well, what so, area do you actually encompass? Well, for the ground ambulance service, it's all of Washoe County, which is a large county, Gerlock? as you know of. Gerlock? Gerlock is one of the places that actually opted out of the system way oh, back okay. in 86. So Incline Village, through their fire service, North Lake Tahoe Fire Protection District, they opted out, so they run their own fire-based uh, ambulance service there. And then, believe it or not, Gerlach volunteers opted out way back then. So they're actually a licensed ambulance service for the community. We support that community uh, and, again, offer education, training, some equipment for them. And then they usually rendezvous with us, bringing the patient down. Um, and then we'll accept that patient and bring them the rest of the way in so they can go back and serve their community. So you don't serve like Fallon? That no, that's outside, outside the county. Okay. So right. the franchise is only for Washoe mm -hmm. County. Mm -hmm. And then the medical helicopter service, though, serves all of Northern California and then also Eastern, um, excuse me, all of Northern Nevada and then Eastern uh, California. So we'll go up and service uh, the communities like uh, up in Gray Eagle, Portola. Some of the flights will get uh, out of Susanville. And then we also still service a around the lake and then south down to Urington. So with Care Flight itself, about half of those transports we do, Bob, evolve what we call scene transports. That's someone that's, that's hurt either through a motor vehicle accident. So if you think of the calls out on I-80 East, um, about half of those end up being where we'll drop a helicopter into a scene. Those are requested by either law enforcement or fire. Then about the other half of the business we do is flying patients in from our rural hospitals back into the tertiary treatment areas mm -hmm. here in, mm -hmm. in Reno. Jim, uh, a question that I know the answer to because I've asked a lot of people over the years. You can quickly answer it. Mm -hmm. Firemen show up, REMSA shows up. Why mm -hmm. the firemen and REMSA at the same time at the same place? Well, this system was always way back in 86, was also always built on a two-tiered system. And the two-tiered system means that the fire service provides fire first response, then REMSA comes in and provides the paramedic treatment and transport. So our service has always been designed that way, so it's two-tiered. And it's a great way for the community, really, because, again, we're utilizing the service of the fire department and then the service of the private company to be able to come in, work side by side, and take care of And the firemen have enough training, actually, in, in medical type situations that they yes, can handle. Yes, they've gone in and, and upgraded their training over the years back in, in the 90s and the early 2000s. Tell, tell us what's changing for REMS. I know you're proud of an award you got. Mm -hmm. We're facing the, 
uh, what is called the Obamacare coming up. How mm. is that going to change what you do and interact in our health system? Well, a as an example, Bob, and, and I brought this just to kind of show you, is this is Obamacare here and all the changes that are going to occur in Obamacare. And you can see it's a very bu busy visual graft here. Well, REMSA is actually part of this graft. We're clear over here in this little corner. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we were able to do was apply for and receive what's called a healthcare innovation award. So in our community, you're gonna see some changes shortly and this is towards pre-hospital care and what we can do in pre-hospital care in doing what's called a triple aim. And it's really to improve health for our community, improve health care for our community, and also lower costs in our community. So with this award, we're able to put some new interventions in what we do in pre-hospital care. Because right now, when you call us through 911 and our medical dispatch center, we send an ambulance. Now we send that ambulance whether you're having difficulty breathing, chest pain, or you have a sprained ankle or a sore throat. Mm -hmm. And the way the system works today is the only, way, the only thing I can do is once I get there is transport you to a licensed emergency department. Well, you've seen over the years how emergency departments are being utilized as primary care facilities. Right. And especially now with the new Health Care Act, that's anticipated to kind of go up. Because again, people that don't have private physicians are going to utilize that resource then for their medical care. So what this grant enabled us to do is look at three interventions. And we're being looked at nationally on how well we can integrate these interventions and actually assist with health care and lower cost. So that first intervention that we're doing, and this one's already up and running, what this is is through this grant, and this is what's called ambulance transport alternatives. Through this grant, instead of always taking you to a licensed emergency department, I can look at other community resources and hmm. transport you there. So let me give you an example. We have some intoxicated patients in our right. community. It happens from time to time. Well, before this started, I had a choice. If you were so intoxicated I couldn't release you on your own, then yeah. I had to take you to the right. emergency department. Right. With this new innovation here, what I can do now is use the community triage center, which is ran by Westcare, down by the homeless shelter. And if you meet certain physiological criteria and everything medically is stable for you, instead of taking you to the emergency department, I can transport you there. Another part of this is we have psychiatric patients in our community, they need help. But Again, before this innovation award, I always had to take you to the emergency department. They'd do a medical screen there through their emergency room physician to make sure that you weren't having a medical problem on top of your psychiatric problem. So then we would wait until that happened. Then we'd go back and pick the patient up and take them to Northern Nevada Adult Mental Health Services if that's where th their treatment was required. Well, today with this innovation grant, Again, if I come and evaluate you and physiologically uh, you're stable, then I can take you again directly to Northern Nevada Adult Mental Health Services instead of overtaxing our emergency departments by going there first and then a second transport for REMSA to bring you back there again the second time. So those two things are going and then the third piece that's going is, is we're working with our health care partners through the hospitals uh, with their urgent care centers. And if I come and see you at your home because you've fallen, but again, physiologically everything is stable, you still need to be seen, I can offer you a choice of taking you to one of the urgent cares to be seen mm -hmm. instead of the one of the emergency departments. This one is great for people that have sprains and strains, especially on their extremities or minor lacerations or abrasions on their extremities that again, instead of utilizing the highest level of cost, right. which is the emergency So the hospitals have to love this, right? I mean, actually, really the do. hospitals, again, are very strong partners with this. Uh, all three of the, all four of the major hospitals also have the urgent care clinic. So we're working side by side with this partnership to again, try to get the patient to the right place the first time at the best cost, again, for the patient mm -hmm. and our overall healthcare system. Urgent care, cheaper than going to the emergency room? 
Absolutely. Oh, okay. and, and even if you look at your own insurance plan, most of us have co-pays to pay. Mm -hmm. Well, a co-pay typically at an urgent care would probably cost you about $35. The co-pay at an emergency department is usually in the range of $100 to $150. So again, even your out-of-pocket costs for that care and treatment can be much better if you fit that criteria. Now, if you're having a heart attack or symptoms of a heart attack, again, then the urgent care is not the appropriate right. place to yeah. go. That's why that ambulance then will automatically take you to the emergency department. But again, you and I probably work on our rose bushes during the weekend. And again, for those minor lacerations that we may get, that can be taken care of just as well in the urgent care and probably quicker because I'm not sitting in that emergency department letting the true life-threatening emergencies being treated first before I'm treated for that non-life-threatening. Now, you said, is, is this program already in place this, or just a part of it? This, this is a part of the three interventions that we'll do. This has been up and running since about January. So, again, we've trained our paramedics and EMTs then to evaluate patients in the field, give those patients that would qualify, give them a choice. I can take you here or I can take you here. Now, another big piece of what we're doing is our community health paramedics. So, we have taken taken eight of our paramedics and given them additional training. And with this additional training, these paramedics now, instead of always being out on the ambulance, they'll go out in a single vehicle and they will be utilized to help follow up patients that have some chronic conditions. So again, we're working with the hospitals and their private physicians that once you're discharged from the hospital, and say you have congested heart failure, we can go out and visit you make sure that you're on your appropriate medications, making sure that you follow up with the diet that you should so that you keep your weight down, and then help keep you out of the hospital. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're doing this with certain chronic conditions that we can work again with the physicians in the hospitals because as this healthcare law changes and gets in, impacted, if you have a return visit to the hospital within 30 days for that condition, then the reimbursement for the hospital is no longer reimbursed. Mm -hmm. So again, by working with our hospitals, working with our community physicians with these chronic conditions. The other part of this is the third intervention. And the third intervention that we'll be coming up with in the next couple weeks is we'll actually have nurses in our medical communication center. And patients can call directly into oh, these nurses. Oh, that's fantastic, yeah. And these nurses will go through set protocols that we have on the national level, but they'll help you if home care is appropriate for your condition. They'll help refer you back to your private physician if that's what's needed. They'll tell you that with your condition, no, you really need to get to an urgent care. Here's some urgent cares that are close to you. Or after going through questioning with the patient, we may turn around and say, you know, you really do need an ambulance, so we're going to go ahead and send you an ambulance. Or, now that we have these community health paramedics, we may say, you know, Bob, in the things that we're discussing right now, I don't think this is life-threatening. However, how about if I send my community health paramedic out to see you in about an hour, mm -hmm. and the two of you sit down, and let's discuss further what your health care options are. Mm -hmm. So with these three interventions, and the, and the last two are being funded by the grant, so that way I can go out and provide these community health paramedics and provide these nurses with the nurse uh, health line to be able to, again, open up to the entire community. If you have questions, instead of always calling 911, you have an option. Now, option. if it's life-threatening, you got to call 911. You call 911. Yeah, right. yeah. and, and, you know, that will be reinforced over mm -hmm. and over again. But if it's not, if you have questions, then you can call us and we can help guide you to some health care needs, utilizing the appropriate resources that we have in our community. Jim, real changes uh, in the health care field, and I'm glad you guys are on the forefront of this and already mm -hmm. addressing it. I'm sorry that yeah. we're out of time because we could talk for a long, long time about a very good service here in our area, REMSA. And thank you for being our guest today. We appreciate it. Thank you for having thank me. Thank you. My pleasure. Okay. Thanks to you. We'll see you again next time. Hope you can join us.